Welcome everyone to Crafting with Julia. If you're new to my channel, my name is Julia and I'm so glad you tuned in today. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Crafting with Julia. I'm Julia. I'm glad you're here today. We're going to be making another doll today. Uh, first, I want to talk a little bit about where I get my inspiration for my dolls. Um, Sometimes I'll be watching a movie, um, like for instance with this guy here, I was watching a movie and it had a Jackson Pollock um, painting in it and I thought, wow, what a cute idea because I thought of this fabric that I had and I said, wow, that would go great with a, a Jackson Pollock um, theme. So that's how I made this guy. Uh, also, I've been wanting to um, dye faux fur and uh, that was my inspiration for this fella. Uh, another time I was just um, looking at what I had. I had these pants and this white jacket and I thought how cute it would be to make a little doll. These happen to be my favorite colors and I usually wear this combination. In fact, I have a jacket just like this and it's funny because after I made this doll, I looked at her and I said, wow, she looks like me. So this is like a little mini me. Anyway, um, this gal here, it was in the springtime and it was raining out. And I just thought, you know what? I want to make a doll with a little umbrella. I thought that was cute. So sometimes I am just cleaning out my craft room and I come across things and um, I say, wow, you know, I, I want to make something with this. So um the other day I was cleaning out my craft room and I found these uh, feathers and I said, you know, this would make a cute feather duster. So that is the inspiration for my doll today. I'm going to make a little housekeeper and I'm going to show you how I make her. So stay tuned. Okay, let's get started on our little housekeeper doll. We're gonna start by making the base. Now, in the description, you will find a PDF for the pattern. Uh, just uh, download that pattern and print it out on your printer and cut out the pattern. And we're gonna start with the shoes. So you are going to need some felt. And my material is gray so I want gray felt shoes. So I have a piece of gray felt and I folded it in half and I traced the shoe. This is the top of the shoe. I traced it on the fold. So here's the fold. Okay, fold it in half. Place the pattern on the fold. Trace it. And that's what you end up with. And then for the sole, you will just need one for each shoe. Okay, so I'm going to cut these out. And I am going to sew only from here to here. I'm going to sew this with my sewing machine right on that line. Okay, leave the top and the bottom open. So, let's first do the sole of the shoe. That starts with three pieces of cardboard, which I placed the pattern on the cardboard, and I cut out three pieces for each shoe, and I made the cardboard slightly smaller than the pattern. Okay, so you're going to cut it out like that. So there's three pieces for one shoe and three pieces for the other shoe. So I'm going to just glue those pieces together. Okay, those pieces are glued together. 
And now with my center punch, I'm going to make a hole in the center of the heel. Okay, you want it to be about right here, not too far to the edge, right in the center of the heel. So I am going to punch that hole and I'm gonna do the same for the other one. Okay, and the purpose of that is just to start the hole so that I can then put my scissor in and make the hole a little bit bigger so that my dowel will fit in the shoe. Okay, so I need to make that a touch bigger. Okay. Do the same thing for the other one. And the dowel should fit right in there like that. Okay, so before we put our dowel in, I want to make the legs. So I'm going to take the two dowels and her leg will be showing. So I got skin tone felt and I'm going to cut. This is a nine by 12 piece. I'm going to cut it in half. And I'm going to roll the dowel, leaving two inches on each side. So the dowel is 12 inches. The diameter is a quarter of an inch. So it's a 12 inch dowel. I'm going to put it on the felt and just roll it and leave two inches. So the felt is 10 inches. I'm sorry, the felt is eight inches and it's gonna be two inches on the sides. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue on the dowel. And I'm going to roll that. Roll it nice and tight. nice and tight and when you get to the end you're just going to put more glue on the edge of the felt okay and that's the leg so we're going to do the same thing for the other leg we're going to take our dowel make sure you can just eyeball it. it doesn't have to be perfect but make sure you got two inches on each side okay you're going to put that on the felt and then you're going to roll it nice and tight Okay, when you get to the end, put some glue on the edge of the felt and close it up. Okay, so we have our two legs. Okay, now we can put them on the base. So, if you've seen my other videos, you know that my dolls, some of my dolls stand. This one is going to be a standing doll. So I need weight in the base. What I do is I buy these washers that perfectly fit over my dowel. If you don't have washers, you could put anything, any kind of weight on the top here. Glue of stone or of anything that has weight, a bolt, anything that, that you have that resembles some kind of weight. I am going to use these washers, so I'm just going to put them on the 
dowel. I'm going to put some glue around the hole and I'm going to stick the dowel through. Okay, like that. And then I'm going to glue the washers down. Okay, so that they don't move around. Okay, and that's what it should look like. That's one leg. Okay, let's do the same thing for the other leg. So we're going to put the washers on. And put some glue. Put the dowel through. Make sure it. It's nice and even. Okay, and now we're going to glue the washers down. Okay, and there's our second leg. That's what we have so far. Okay, and now she'll be able to stand. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to sew my pattern. Like I said, I'm just going to sew from here, follow the line all the way down to here. Leave the top and the bottom open. So I'm going to sew that and come back. Okay, I'm back. I sewed my the top of the shoe. Uh, this is how it looks. So now I'm going to turn it right side out. So that's what it looks like. Okay, do the same thing with the other one. Okay, so now before we put the sole on, we're going to put the leg in because once we sew up the bottom, there's no way you're going to get leg in. So we're going to put our legs in through the bottom. Okay, like that. And now we're going to take the sole and we're going to pin it to the bottom. Okay, and that should fit in perfectly. So we're going to pin that to the bottom, and now we're going to hand sew around the edge. So I take embroidery thread. Now you're going to start at the inside because you don't want the knot at the end showing on the outside. So you're going to separate these two pieces and you're going to go in from the inside. Okay. And just pull that through. Okay, so now your knot is in the inside. Okay, so now we're just going to sew around the shoe. So you're going to go in and around. Okay, and it's going to look like that. Okay, and just do that around the entire sole of the shoe.
Now, when you get to the end, you want to finish by taking the thread, you're going to knot it, you're going to knot the end, and then you're going to take the needle, go through the shoe, like that, inside, and come out the bottom of the sole. It's hard for me to do upside down. Anyway, you're going to come out the bottom of the sole, and this way, you won't see the knot. Okay, and then you're just going to cut it. Okay, and then you got to have a nice finished edge, and it should look like that. Okay, and now I'm going to do the other shoe. I'm going to sew that on and I'll be back. Okay, our shoes are done and now I'm ready to stuff the shoes. Okay, so we're going to take a little bit of polyfill and you're just going to stuff. Make sure you get the toe part. Okay, there's one shoe. Okay, so our shoes are done. Actually, let me just use this, use this up. Okay, our shoes are done. That's how it looks. Okay, now we're ready to move on. Now we need to put on socks. So, I took a tube sock and I cut a piece that's five inches long and you're going to take half of it and roll it in and then the other half, you're going to do the same thing. So you're going to take the bottom, roll it in and you're going to take the top and roll it in. Okay, and that makes the sock. Okay, it should look like that. All right, and now we're just going to put it right over the leg onto the top of the shoe. Okay, like that. And now we're just going to add a little bit of glue so that it stays in place. A little bit of glue in the front and the back. Okay, so that it stays in place.
Okay. So now we have that so far. Now we're ready to put on the body. This is a six inch styrofoam egg. All of the products that I use, um, I will put the links uh, to Amazon in the description. Um, if you choose to buy it uh, through Amazon, you can use those links. Otherwise, I'm sure you could probably get it in Joann's or Hobby Lobby. Um, it's a six inch egg. Anyway, so you're going to put it onto your dowel and measure where you want the holes to be. Okay, so I think I'm going to put it right there, make a little indentation. Okay, so I have two holes on the bottom now. And I'm going to poke a larger hole with my scissors. So it's got to go in about two inches. And I'm going to put some glue in the holes and put it on the legs. Okay, just apply a little pressure to get that. Onto the legs. Okay, so, so far we have the legs and the body. Now we're gonna move on to the dress. So let's put that aside. So again, you're going to refer to the pattern. Now, on the pattern, you will see, uh, it'll be something called the back of the shirt and something called um, front of the shirt. Disregard this one, because I'm not gonna use this in this pattern. So we're gonna disregard that front of the shirt. What we're, and this back of the shirt says cut one. You are going to fold the fabric so that two sides are facing together, and you're going to cut. So you, you actually need two of these. So I put my fabric down, two pieces facing together, and I cut, I drew around the pattern, and now I am going to sew just the sides. I'm gonna sew that side and that side. Uh, before I do that, I am going to fold this up, and I'm going to sew a hem at the bottom of the shirt, so it will look like that. So I'm going to take one piece and fold a hem and then take the other piece and do the same thing, fold a hem. Okay, so I'm going to, and then after that, I'm going to sew these two sides. So I will have an opening on the bottom and the top. This will be the neckline and this will be the waist. Okay, then I cut out I mean, I'm sorry, I drew the pattern for the sleeves. So you will need four. So what I did was, um, again, with the right sides together, I drew one for the right arm and one for the left arm. So I end up with four. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to sew around the curve and leave the bottom open but again, I'm going to flip this up and make a hem so that the edge is nicely finished, but it will still be open, okay? And then for the skirt, the pattern, now because this is an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, I needed to make an extension. So on the pattern, you'll see the skirt, and then you'll see something called um, tape to the skirt. And that's this piece here. And that's where you're gonna tape it, right here. I'm gonna tape this piece to the this, to this edge of the skirt and you'll end up with this size. So here you're gonna cut it on the fold. So you're gonna fold your fabric and you're gonna cut the pattern on the fold. Draw the pattern. And again, I am going to make 
hems all around. So I want a nice finished piece, so I will make a hem all the way around. Do not sew anything else. Just, just make a hem all the way around and you'll have a piece that's 24 inches long. And let's leave it at that and I will come back and show you what to do with that piece. So let me go sew all of my pieces and I'll be back. All right, I sewed all my pieces, so this is what it looks like. This is the shirt. So I sewed the hem first and I sewed the top, but as you can see, those are open. The top is open where the neck is and the waist is open and I sewed along the edges. So now I'm just gonna turn it right side out. And that is our shirt, okay? The sleeves, <clears throat> again, I sewed a hem at the bottom and left it open. And now we're just going to fold it right side out. Okay, so that's one sleeve. And that's the other sleeve. Now I usually just take a chopstick, you could use a pencil, and go around the seam just to get it all. Actually, that's not gonna work. No. Okay. So that's our other sleeve. So we've got the two sleeves and we have our shirt. And now for the skirt, this is the piece. Now again, you cut it on the fold and we're gonna, we're gonna sew a hem around the long ends and we are going to sew a seam at the other edge to close it up and you end up with a piece like this okay this is going to be the skirt so what we're going to do is to make the waistband you're going to take a needle and thread and we're going to run a stitch around the top okay just keep going in and around In and around okay can you see what I'm doing here I'm gonna go in and around just like this okay As you can see, these dolls are not difficult to make. I think the, uh, I spend more time trying to figure out what fabrics I'm going to use and the type of doll I'm gonna make. I spend more time doing that than actually making the doll. Um, but I do love to pick out the fabric. Um, most of my fabric I get at Joann's. I love to buy fabric. Okay, so after you have it all sewn around, you're going to pull it close. Okay, it's gonna end up looking like that. And that's gonna be her skirt. But we don't wanna close it yet because I don't know how big I need the waist to be. So we're gonna wait on that until we put everything together.
So I am going to put her shirt on. Put it over the egg. Okay, it's going to look like that. And we're going to put a little bit of glue so that it stays down. Now we're going to slip her skirt over it and we want to make sure the seam is in the back. So we're going to put it on like that. I'm going to take a pin and I'm going to pin the seam so that I know it's directly in the back. Okay, so we're going to put this. Ah. Okay, so I just put a pin in so that holds that in place. And then I'm going to put a pin in the front to hold that in place. Okay. Now I can pull my thread. want to fix it so that all the ruffles are even. Okay. And then we're just going to I am not Got a knot in the back. Okay, cut that off. Put that aside. And now we're going to glue the skirt so that it stays in place. Put a little bit of glue in the back. Okay, so now we have the skirt all glued on. And it doesn't matter that this isn't really finished well because we're gonna put an apron over that so this will all be hidden. Okay, but so far this is what we have. 
All right, now I didn't put the sleeves on yet because I want to make the arms. So for the arms, I use muslin for skin. I get muslin, I buy it by the bolt in uh, Joann's. Um, this is the pattern for the arms. You're gonna cut four. So what I did was I folded my fabric in half and I don't know if you can see, I, I drew it with um, erasable ink. I don't know if you could see that, but anyway, the pattern is on there, so it looks like that. Okay, and the other one looks like that. I turned the pattern over because you want to write in the left hand. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this over to my sewing machine, and I am going to stitch all the way around. I'm going to stitch all the way around, and then I'll come back and we'll put the arms together. Okay, arms are sewn. So like I said, I sewed all the way around. So now we are going to cut it out. Now, to turn it right side out, you are going to pull the pieces apart. Okay, and you're going to grab one side and you're going to make a little slit. But you want to do it, I'm sorry, you want to do it up here by the top of the arm. So, there is a right arm and a left arm. You want the slit to be on the inside of the arm. So with the thumbs facing forward, it will be like this. So I'm going to cut a slit on the inside of this one and on the inside of this one. Be careful not to grab the other side. Oh, sorry. I don't know why I'm having so much trouble today. I'm sorry. Just one of those days when nothing goes right. Okay, there's my slit. Okay. So I got a slit on one side, and that is the right arm. And now I'm going to put a slit on the inside of the left arm. And that's how we are going to turn it right side out. So I take this tool. It's uh, from Dritz. It's a fabric turning tool. They come in all different sizes. What you do is you put the piece inside the hole. You take this thing that looks like a chopstick. And you just put it right through the hole. 
and turn your fabric inside, right side out. And then with the chopstick, you're going to go around the seams. And fluff them out. Okay, now make sure you get your thumb. You want to make sure you form your thumb. Okay, like that. Okay, again, you just put it in. That tool is a real time saver. All right, and just go around my seams. Remember to get your thumb. the thumb okay there's the hand okay so I got my right right arm and left arm and now we have to stuff it with some polyfill so you take your polyfill and through the hole you want to just stuff it now another tool that I use which is very handy for stuffing is a stuffing fork and this is a great tool for, especially when you have to get into spaces like the thumb. It pushes polyfill right up in there. Okay, see I'm getting in there with the polyfill. Make sure I get all the way to the tip of the thumb. I hope you're enjoying this video. Um, if you are, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel. Um, that would really help me out a lot. Um, I'm new to the whole YouTube thing. In fact, I'm not very technical, so I'm learning as I go along, uh, learning how to do thumbnails and how to do iMovies and um, it's really a learning process for me, but I do appreciate everyone uh, watching. So um, if you could subscribe, that would be awesome. And I really do appreciate it. Uh, and if you do like my videos, be sure to ring that bell so that you're notified of all the new videos that come out. Um, I also have a Facebook page. Uh, you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Those links are in the description. Um, I also created a new Facebook group called um, Crafting with Julia's Creative Community. Um, that's where you can post what you make. Um, if you've watched my videos and you made something based on my video, I would love to see it. You can post it there. Um, I would be so flattered by that. Um, but it's, uh, it's a new group, so it's just starting. There aren't many members right now. Um, I hope that it will grow. Um, and it's just an, an outlet so that you can post what you make and have people comment. Um, you know, don't be shy and don't think that your, your crafts aren't good enough. Um, you'd be amazed at how good you really are. Um, people tend to be very hard on themselves. And even if you don't want to post anything, if you go there just to get inspired, that's fine too. Um, so whether you're looking for inspiration or wanting to give inspiration, um, it, and it'd be great if you joined. And that link is um, in the description. I just love crafting. I love what I do. So I just want to share um, 
the things that I make. Um, and I love to see people post what they make. Um, I made a, a doll the other day. Um, a, it was a male doll. And um, uh, some people had made it based on my video. And they posted what they made. And I was so flattered and so proud of them. I mean, their dolls came out awesome. Great. So um, I would love to see it. Our arms are done. Okay, so now I have a right arm and a left arm. And now we don't have to worry about closing up that hole. Usually I sew that up, but we don't have to because that is going to go into the sleeve. So you're going to put you're going to put a little glue. You're going to put the arm in the sleeve like that. Okay, so it's going to look like that. So that's really covered up. And you just want to put some glue in there so that it stays. Okay. Okay, so we have that so far. And now we are going to glue it onto the body. Um, remember that thumbs face forward. I've made this mistake many times where I put the glue on the wrong side and I end up putting the thumbs in the back, which are, is not the right way. So that's why I'm saying that. And you are going to glue it right at the shoulder. So where you think the shoulder is, that's where you're going to glue the arm. Okay, so we're gonna take a little bit of glue, put it at the top there, and put it right at the shoulder. We'll do the same thing on the other side. And just hold it in place while the glue dries a little bit. Okay, so this is what we have so far. She's beginning to look like a girl. Okay, we are ready for the head. Okay, let's continue on with the face. So you're gonna take your pattern and you're gonna uh, draw it on um, a piece of Lycra. Now I use Lycra because when I put it over the ball, it stretches out very nicely and you can stretch it. Um, so before, we put the, the lycra on, I am going to put a nose on the doll. And I am going to use this pin. I buy these on Amazon. I'm just gonna find where I want the nose to be. And I'm gonna stick the pin right in there, like that. Okay? Now, for the face, we're just going to run a stitch around the entire edge of the lycra, just going in and out like this, in and out. Okay, we just run a, like a basting stitch around the edge.
Okay. So we have it all sewn. Now I'm going to open it up and place it over the styrofoam ball. And now we're just going to pull it close. Okay. We're just going to close up that hole. Okay. And tie it off. Okay. That's what we have. Now, we, we are going to draw the eyes. Now, I am using this template here that I got from um, creative, uh, creativabymarta.com, and I will provide the link uh, in the description if you wanna purchase this. Um, if not, you could just draw an oval or a circle or um, I just think this makes it much easier. So I'm going to take my um, Micron pen. It's a fine line Micron pen. And I'm going to draw the eyes. like that. Then I take, this is a paint pen by uh, Pizzi Art. Also, I got this on Amazon. The link will be in the description. And I'm just going to color in the eyes. Okay, so we have the eyes colored in. Okay. Now I want to make a make the lips. Again, I'm going to use red. And I'm just going to draw a little smile. Oops, sorry. Okay, and now I'm going to draw some eyelashes again using my fine line marker. I'm going to draw eyelashes. Okay. 
one. So that's what we have. And now I'm going to add some blush. Okay, and now I am going to use this, it's called uh, Accent Liner, and what it is, is um, it's like a white, um, I guess it's acrylic paint, but it's used for accenting, um, like, um, like the eyes, I want to put a little white dot on the eyes. So I am going to take my stylus and I am going to make little white dots on the eyes. And just play around with it. It's really up to you how big you want the dots to be. I like to put two dots, one larger than the other. Okay, so that's my eyes. Okay, and then on the cheeks, I like to accent them. It just gives it a little dimension. I put little dots on the cheeks. Okay, there's our face. Okay, so now we're just gonna sit that down and let it dry. And we're gonna come back and do the hair. Now for the hair, we are going to take some yarn. Now I am using this, I got it from Joann's. It's six millimeter chunky yarn. And this I got at Joann's. I believe, uh, and the color is cardinal. And I, I chose red because I think it would go perfectly with her little red, the little red in the dress. I think the hair would look nice in red. So we are going to take, find the end of the yarn. Okay, where is it? Where is the end? Here it is. Okay. Okay, we're going to take the end of the yarn. And I have a piece of cardboard that this I use for my template, and it's 18 inches long. We're going to take the yarn and we're going to wrap it around. We're going to wrap it around, I'd say maybe 25 times. So, one. So it's all wrapped up. That is number 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, oh, 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25. 
Okay. All right, then I'm going to take a piece and we're going to tie the top. off and we're going to cut the middle like that okay now I just want to cut these pieces off the top okay this is going to be our hair so we're going to um, take the head and you want to spread out the hair okay, spread out the hair and we're going to glue the base of it onto the base of the head. So it looks like that. Okay, so I'm just going to take a little bit of glue, put it to the base of the head, and I'm going to put the hair onto the base of the head. Okay, so it looks like that. All right, then we're going to just take the hair. And we're going to bring it up. some glue on the sides. Some glue on the other side. I'm taking another piece of yarn. I'm going to tie it off. I'm going to tie the top. So it's a little staticky in here today. Then we're going to put a little glue toward the back of the head so that the hair stays in place. Okay. And you don't have 
have to worry about the sides because we're going to have the headband that's going to cover the side. So if you see a little bald spot, that's okay. Okay, so, so far, this is what we have. Okay. Okay, now we're going to put the head on the doll. So what I did was I put two toothpicks into the neck and this will secure the head. So you're gonna put the head onto those two toothpicks and you're just gonna slide it right in. Okay, and that should secure her head. All right, and now let's put a little bit of glue just to make sure that's in nice and tight. Okay, and now we're ready to make a headband. So I took a piece of white felt and I cut it uh, four inches wide by 30 inches long. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make a curve at the top. So I'm just gonna take my scissors and just curve it in at the top. Okay, so it looks like that. Okay, reason for that is because now I'm going to sew it and when I sew it, I want the ends to have a point. So I'm going to sew along the edge and I'm gonna leave an opening in the middle so that we can turn it right side out. Then I went ahead and I cut a piece of wire, flexible wire, and I cut that 30 inches because after we sew it, we are going to put the wire in so that it's easily bendable. Okay, so let me go sew that and I will return. Okay, now we're ready to assemble the headband. So I went ahead and I sewed it and turned it right side out. And now we're going to put the wire in. So we're just gonna slip the wire in, go to the end. I'm just gonna take the other side. and maneuver it in there. Okay, so the wire is in there, and now I'm gonna take a little bit of fabric glue called Fabric Fusion. This is what I use, Fabric Fusion. And I am going to, instead of sewing up the hole, I'm just gonna glue it. So the hole is now glued. And we have a nice wire headband. Okay, I just want to make sure it goes all the way to the point. Okay, so there's our wire headband. So now we are going to put it on the doll.
So we have her little headband on her head. And now we're going to make an apron for her. Okay, so that's how she should look. All right. Okay, we are ready to finish up this cutie. So we are now going to make an apron for her. So what I did was I cut a rectangle and this rectangle is seven inches by five inches. So seven inches long, five inches wide. And then I cut a long strip. Um, this is for the band and the tie. Um, this is 25 inches by a half inch. So we want to take the long end of the felt and we're just going to gather the top. So we're going to just run a stitch along the top to make little pleats so we can gather it. Okay. And I just want a little bit of a gather. So we're just going to pull it a little bit. And then we're going to knot it off. That's about where I want it. Okay. So that's our little gather. And now we're going to just glue the band on. So make sure you have all the pleats where you want them. Okay. And make sure this is in the center. I guess we could just eyeball it. And we're just gonna glue this piece on top. So taking your hot glue, you're just gonna run some glue across the top. Okay, place this piece over it. Okay, and here is our apron. It should look like this, okay? Now we're just going to tie it onto her. Just tie a bow in the back. Put a little glue so it stays.
Okay, so we have a nice little bow on the back. Okay, that's our little apron. And now I'm going to make a collar because I want to hide where I glued the neck to the head. So I'm going to make a little collar. And how I do that is um, I cut an oval. This is a six inch oval, six by four. And I'm just going to cut it in half. And now I want to sew I want to sew the two pieces together. I'm going to make a collar. So you're going to take the end and again just run a stitch across the top like this in and out. And go right into the other one. Okay, now we're going to pull that close. And that's going to be her little collar. So I'm going to put it on her. And then I'm going to pull it closed. Pull it closed and stitch it up. And I'm going to glue that down so it stays. Okay, so she's almost done. I think I want to give her some earrings, so I think I'm going to put some pearls on the sides of her head by her ears. Okay. Oh, I think she's so adorable. Okay. So we have our little doll, our little housekeeper doll. And now we're going to make her feather duster. Okay. So we're going to take some feathers. We're going to take a dowel. Now this is my 12 inch dowel that I cut in half. So it's six inches. And I got some feathers, and you're going to need some twine. So this is wired twine that I got from Amazon. So we're going to take our feathers, and you're just going to glue them onto the end of your stick. Okay. Like this. Just glue them on.
Now, if you're not making a housekeeper doll, then you don't have to do this step, obviously. At this point, you are going to do, you're gonna put the embellishment of whatever it is that you're making. So I was telling a friend of mine that I was gonna make a housekeeper doll because I found these feathers and she said she would have made a flapper, which is also a great idea. Probably if I had thought about that, I probably would have made a flapper. That would have been really cute to have like that ruffled skirt. So now that you have your feathers all on there, now we're gonna wrap the twine around. So I'm gonna put a little bit of glue to start it. And we're just gonna wrap it here. Now, I used red twine because it matches her skirt. I wanted to give it a little color. So the theme here is red, gray, and white. Then I'm just going to take my wire cutters, snip it there, and glue the ends on. Okay. And there's a feather duster. Cute. So I'm just going to put it in her hand like that. Or should I put it up? I don't know. Should I put it up? Or should I put it down? Or should she be holding it across the body? Yeah, I think that's cute. That's what I think I'll do. So I'm gonna put a little glue on her hand. press the feather duster. Okay, and we have our little housekeeper doll. Is she cute or what? She's adorable. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you'll give it a go. If you do, please, please, please post your doll in my Facebook group. It's uh, Crafting with Julia's Creative Community. I would love to see your doll there. Um, and hopefully it will inspire others to post. Um, don't be shy. Um, I'd like to see it there. If you liked this video, please hit the like button. Um, uh, if you subscribe to my channel, uh, I appreciate that. Uh, also ring the bell so that you'll be notified of all new videos that come out. Um, thank you for watching. Happy crafting!